In the last day of our Dead Sea trip, we decided to get in the car and explore the south of the Dead Sea region. No matter where you turn here, you'll find something of biblical and historical significance. There's just endless routes and paths and little roads into the mountains and monuments and structures in the mountains. Uh, pool reservations, new pools that are formed because of the Dead Sea drying out and it's incredible. There's so much to do here. This is so cool. Wow. In this episode, we'll explore the valley of the Zohar Brook, which is mentioned in the Bible as the Way of Edom, and we'll explore the ancient Roman fortress that stands on top of a milestone hill. We're in a very interesting location. In the middle of this valley, surrounded by just limestone rock, is a fortress. Then we'll continue south to Mount Sodom, which has a peculiar looking pillar named after Lot's wife. That's Lot's wife. And underneath it, a cave, which some believe to be the place where Lot dwelt with his daughters. So join us on an adventure in this marvelous and unique place on Earth. In the south of the Dead Sea, there is a place called Zoar Brook. It is not to be confused with Zoar, the place to which Lot escaped from Sodom and Gomorrah. Even though these two sound similar in English, in Hebrew language they are entirely different words. The entrance to this valley is somewhat hard to spot. It's a little turn from the main road 90, which takes you on a dirt road and then a few yards later, it leads you to a scenic drive by the edge of a cliff in between beautiful limestone and marlstone mountains. This road is believed to be the way of Edom, mentioned in 2 Kings 3, when the king of Israel, Judah, and Edom went to fight the Moabites. And to get to Moab, they took this way. But after seven days, they ran out of water. And after Elisha's prayer, God provided an abundance of water to this valley, even though there was no rain. So scholars believe that this location fits the biblical story because it rains afar off in the mountains, so you cannot hear the rain. But then the rain water does not get absorbed into the ground, but rather drains down the mountains into this valley, filling the cisterns and the water dams that they excavated here. A few years back, archaeologists started digging and looking into the history behind this place. What they were surprised to find, there's very little information left behind who lived here, who were the people, why this fortress was built, and what was this road. So a few different theories started to be developed. One of them is that this fortress is built in a very strategical place in the center of the Edom Way. This way is believed to later become the trade route during the Roman Byzantine or the Crusader Mamluk periods to carry the salt produced in the Dead Sea into the heart of the land. 
and historians speculate that this fortress served to protect the road and perhaps even collect taxes on the salt trade. There is even a lookout tower carved out of the bedrock located in front of the fortress. It would be a great place for soldiers to observe the incoming traffic. But all these are theories which have not much archaeological support. First survey dated this fortress to the Roman time, while a later conducted survey placed it into the Crusader period. The lack of archaeological evidence to build a proper storyline can be attributed to the easily crumbling marl stone. Look at this. What looks like once used to be steps is now, look at this. So it looks like just one slide. <laughs> it crumbles so easily. You don't want to attempt to climb this. Look, wow, look at that. Look at that rock. There are two pillars for Lot's wife, one in Jordan and one in Israel. The Jordanian pillar has a much better shape of a human and an interesting cave with archaeological findings from the Iron Age, while the Israeli pillar looks more like a giant rock with a salt cave underneath. It would make no sense to figure out which one is the real pillar, because according to the book of Genesis, the pillar shouldn't even be above the cave at all, but rather in the plain. That's Lot's wife. So what we see here today is just a reminder of the story rather than an artifact. I don't know. It looks like Lot's wife was... Maybe a relative of like the uh, Nephilim. Nephilim or Goliath or the Anakim or... But the interesting part about this place is the actual mountain rather than the pillar itself. This mountain is called Mount Sodom, and if you examine it with your eyes, you'll notice that there are no plants or vegetation on it. That is because Mount Sodom is made of 80% salt. It is one giant mountain of salt, and since salt dissolves much faster than limestone, this mountain is home to the longest single natural salt cave in the world. It is nearly two and a half miles long, and until recently, it was open to the public, but today it had been closed due to the danger of falling salt rocks. The cave of uh, Lot and uh, his daughters, where they hid after they left Zoar. Okay. Zoar is south of that sea, and it says, from there they left and went to dwell in the caves. So it's very much possible to dwell in caves like these over here. You know, when we read about it and you read that they lived in, they went up to the mountains and in a cave there, in my, in my head, mountains are, you know, those green, big, where you have a lot of trees and everything. Yeah. But the mountains in this area, they're just sand, desert. They're, they're bare. There's nothing on them. So yeah. I've, I've never thought about it like that. And it must have not been easy especially in the heat and all that but there are plenty of caves in those mountains i mean plenty so it's many. amazing yeah and there are some sources of water you gotta know where they are but if yeah. you don't you'll die out here because that sea so salty you can't drink it no, can do nothing no with way. it so to get fresh water you gotta know where th you get to know where the, those reservoirs are where the streams are otherwise you die in here yeah this is nice a little bit of shade a little bit of shade 
you know after swimming in the dead sea like the oily oily part because it's oily and salty and everything and then you stand in the sun and it feels somebody's frying you <laughs> <laughs> Deep fried. And you don't need like seasoning because we have salt. <laughs> 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 <laughs>